So what we're talking about first on this project is car washing. We get telephone calls all the time, people want to set car washes up. Now, it's okay setting a car wash up, there's a lot of questions we need answered before we can even start to think about how to set a car wash up. The first one is, obviously, that car wash is only as good as the water supply unless you're going to start to use storage of water. So the first thing you should be doing is finding the point of inlet to the actual site, the building, and get yourself a container, set your watch, and time how long, how much water can go into that container in one minute. That then gives you an idea of how much water you've got coming in on site. You can then obviously start thinking about what machines you can use on site, whether you're going to need to think about obviously storing water to fill up overnight now even with water storage that won't last forever if you've got a very poor water supply coming in on site when you're setting up the machines themselves obviously with water tanks and so on what you've got to remember is that if that car wash is busy that day and you've got a machine that's doing say 15 litres yeah you can calculate that if that machine is running for 15 minutes for an hour exactly how much water is going to be used depending on the machines that you're going to put in on site so that is the most important thing to think about first of all when we know how much water we've got coming in on site to a car wash we can then obviously think about what machines can be used on there now the next thing to look for on a site is whether you've got 240 volt or 415 volts three phase if you've got three phase and you've got plenty of water supply coming into the site that's a massive bonus because what simply happens is you've got more water to be able to get them cars through and out and what you're doing is putting extra money into your pocket the quicker you can get them cars through and out doing the job right the more money you're going to make in that day the next thing that we need to be thinking about is drainage no point getting a car wash setting it all up and the water itself running out onto the road. The council come along and before you've even got going, what simply happened is the council have shut you down because you've got water running out. When you're using pressure washers and so on, you're also using chemicals. So the last thing you want is chemical running out onto the road as well. You all, all you'll get is complaints. And the other thing to think about is frost, jack frost. Jack frost is also a main part of working. So. When Jack Frost's about, what you've simply got there is a very busy time with the road salt on the cars. The customers are wanting the cars clean because of that salt, they don't want it left on the car, so you become very, very busy at that period of time. It's no good when Jack Frost's about that you can't work and continue doing your job. So the most important part is getting the drainage right also. Now, you've also got to check to see when you say drainage, there's different types of drains, where that, that water is going to be running off to, interceptor tank or what it's going to run into, needs to be thought about as well. If you're going to be doing some digging, also on that side of it, you need to think about where you're going to be siting or what you, types of machines you're going to be using. Are you going to be using fixed machines? Are you going to be using mobile machines? If it's a mobile machine, then obviously you're going to be taking that in and out and to play every day, and obviously when you get there, you've also then got the hoses, long hoses to pull in and out, connecting the water supply and the electric outside, wherever you're going to be working from. You've also got to think about safety. Water, electric doesn't go together. It also means that during the frosty weather, then machines will freeze up. So the best thing to do is, if you can do, get the machines inside a building inside, taking the actual hoses themselves, if you're doing drainage and you're digging out and use, using that side of it and putting drains in place, think about putting under, under ducting underneath the ground, 18 inches down, and simply coming up in different areas of the site of where you're going to be setting up and how you're going to be working. Normally when you're setting up a, a system itself, you've got different areas such as pre-spray, high pressure, foaming. You've then got the rinsing off area and the waxing and so on. So like I say, you will need different points to come up and out of the ground if you're going to do it that way. The other way is to travel up via the, in the air via metal stanchions or girders or whether you've got a canopy there 
and doing it that way. If it's done that way, then you've also got to still think about frost and everything else. Both ways you can use heat traces underneath the ground or up above. Them heat traces set up right, they only come on when the air temperature goes below plus five. They will stay on, keep working until the air temperature goes up above plus five and then go off. Leave them plugged in all year round. They won't use any electric in summer. They use very little electric anyway. So just leave them plugged in all the time. And they're heat traces. They can go on your lines. Uh, what you've got to remember though is be very careful on that side when you're doing it. Because reason being heat traces cannot come in contact with each other unless they will burn themselves out. So like I say, you'd have one long heat trace depending with all your hoses in. So you've got four different points on your site. One the furthest point, which is obviously the first part, which is the TFR in, pre-spraying set up, followed by the pressure washing, followed by the foaming, followed by the rinsing. So what you'd simply have is four points coming out of the ground. You'd then have the actual one heat trace running the full length to the furthest point. So you're not putting heat trace after heat trace after heat trace underneath the ground. That will automatically come on. You'd leave your thermostat above the ground that obviously picks up the air temperature and that will just come on and go off as it needs to. At least then you know that you're not going to come in next day and you can't work because Jack Frost tech, tech, tech hose is out throughout the night. Same again if it's going above, make it so you can drain them, put heat traces on but also run the hoses correctly so if you have a valve before it goes back into the building or wherever they drain the cells off when you open the valves at both points. One before it goes into the building a T piece with an isolation ball valve and one where you're going to connect your high pressure hoses up to. Same again, quick release points underneath the ground, they come out so you can just quick release your hoses and take them in on a night. Keeping your trigger pulled, it will let the water out. Water will not run out of a hose until you've actually got hold of that trigger, kept that trigger open, and obviously the water will then run out. Now, something else we've just touched on there also is whether the machines are going to be mobile or fixed. Now what we tend to find in the marketplace, if a machine is inside a building and fixed, we can then also frost protect that. So that building can be kept warm. That heat, same again, will only come on when it's needed and will go off when the temperature gets above a certain temperature. It's then protecting. It costs a lot less money to protect the machines than what it does to start resealing, revalving or replacing damaged dead because of frost damage. The other little thing on that side of it is when machines are fixed in a building and so on, Borrowers, them borrowers that come in throughout the night that decide to uh, borrow things, they're the ones that can't be bothered to go out and do a proper job or anything else like that and don't want work, they want easy money. So when they see a car wash that's got mobile machines, they can watch that throughout the day, see what you've got, see whether it's worth borrowing overnight. Where with fixed machines, they can't be bothered, they're too lazy to start getting spanners out to start on doing things off off walls and so on. So like I say, one of the bonuses is if you have a building and you can put your machines in there straight away, we can frost protect it. We can also then protect it from borrowers throughout the night. Another thing that we're touching on as well is 415 volts or 240. Now, if you're running 240 volt, that machine, most it's going to possibly do is about 12 litres, 100 bar. If you can run 415 volts and you've got 415 volt electric supply into that building, we're looking at 200 bar, 15 litres or 21 litres at, at, at 150 bar for them machines. It means you're going to get them cars through quicker and obviously at that stage you're going to be putting more money in your pocket. Now when we set up pressure washer up, years ago when we used to set machines up, we'd have a machine, uh, not naming and shaming certain machines, and what would simply happen is the system itself would be operated via the trigger. So when you pull the trigger, the machine started. When you let go of the trigger, the machine stopped. Now the machines are still out there in the marketplace, but the only problem is what you've got there is it's classed as a trap pressure unloader. Now a trap pressure unloader works on, on the outlet side of the machine, on the unloader itself, and the trigger, what it's doing is trapping water in there. When the water starts to leak out, whether you've got a leaking gun or a leaking hose, that machine will go jip, 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 jip. At that stage, what you're doing is putting strain on the motor, the pump, the seals, the whole setup. Before you know it, you've got a machine that's dead. You're having to get it repaired. That's no good to yourself. You're losing money at that stage as well. So like I say, them days with machines that are 
automatic stop start stop start stop start we moved away from it because all the problems we used to have customers would complain it was never their fault because the gun was leaking it was always the machine's fault also when you used to have a hot machine as well same again now you had a hot boiler and that boiler every time it went chip 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 it would try and put fuel into the system you then end up with a boiler that burnt out same again what we try and do is set machines up now that's flow sensitive what I mean by a flow sensitive is if you've got a water tank there or any type of tank what would happen is the machine itself would suck water into the pump when you let go of the trigger the water returns back to that tank that the water's been sucked from so what's simply happening all the time is you've got a cold feed going into the pump so the pump head is kept warm and the seals are kept, kept sorry the, the, the pumps are kept cool and so the seals inside the pumps and the valves so it means you'll get less failure and fatigue on a pump that is set up for flow and return a flow and return pump can be set up and just simply run round and round and round so the water in water out water in water out when the gun isn't pulled obviously when you pull your trigger the water's being used that can be set up on a different sort of a system if you wanted to where the machine after a period of time times itself out what simply happens is if you have a machine that's timing out system if you don't pull that trigger that machine itself uh, say you set it for two minutes that machine would run for two minutes if nobody pulled the trigger and, and initialized the machine itself the machine itself would automatically shut itself down now the only problem is with that is the machine when you pull the trigger will not start back up so what we normally do is we put a 12 volt system in place or a 24 volt system a switch outside on a pillar or area where you're working or in the doorway where you've gone back to when you finish working the machine's shut itself down as you walk back out of that door you press the button the machine starts running again as long as you keep that trigger pull that machine will keep running and running and running but the biggest bonus about it all is as well that machine when it's got floor sensitive you're pulling that trigger you've got 200 bar pressure if you've got a 200 bar machine when you let go of that trigger you've got zero pressure in that high pressure hose so it means the hose is not under stress and strain the same as it is to a trap pressure unloader where on a trapped unloader you've got a machine that's doing 200 bar when you let go of the trigger that hose becomes even more rigid with more pressure in than 200 bar it's trapped in there and what simply happens is if the gun's leaking the machine will start going chip 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 where in a flow sensitive system that gun can be leaking and that machine will not reset that timer it will just time itself out like it would normally you've got to literally pull the trigger initialize the machine and get the machine running fully before it shuts itself down so like i say when we're doing machines we use flow sensitive suck from a tank return to the tank you can leave it running you'll do no harm you won't get seal fatigue you won't get valve white wear and you won't get the system itself on that side of it with 415 volt you'll also find that a motor doesn't half go with a thud every time it starts so when you pull the trigger on an automatic stop start system thud thud when it's stopping starting at that stage what happens is you get wear on the shafts now another little thing is when we're building machines most of the time we use a male shafted motor and a male shafted pump when you use a system a lot of times in the marketplace they use a, a hollow shafted motor and a male shafted pump you've then got metal to metal where on the system when we're using male male shafts we then put a rubber coupling in between that can cope with that thud we then tend we, de, we then find that there's no wear the same or a worn keyway because or a worn shaft because that rubber is in place now that rubber does need servicing but it's very minimal cost if it does need changing but like i say you will know before you've done any harm and obviously on that side you're not ending up incurring a massive cost to replace them rubber couplings in between like you would be replacing a motor or a pump because on that side of it the, the actual the actual shaft itself has completely worn away on the pump or the motor uh, and at that stage you end up incurring even more problems
So what we have got there is a lot of different things that we're asking about, questions and so on. The next thing is, so when you set up a car wash, what simply happens is you've got different areas. The first area, obviously, is for pre-spraying, a TFR pre-sprayer. Now, that can be a pump-up sprayer that you obviously pump up and obviously walk around the car and spray the car and so on. Now, we've also got another alternative nowadays, and what that is is a 240-volt pump setup. You will pre-mix large amounts and you will just simply pull the trigger of the lance and obviously that then puts puts a chemical around the car. Now different times of year you have to put chemical obviously in winter higher up on the car, TFR it uh, and obviously lower lower down in the summer months because it doesn't get as dirty. Also you've then got the, ke the chemical that you're going to be putting on the wheels to clean the wheels as well. So that can be done via pre-spray pumps or like I say you can get yourself electric pump and obviously on that side now that's the first area when we're setting a car up that we cover first of all next one is is a machine that's high pressure and good volume so you can get that car washed off with what you've just applied onto it and get it washed off quickly now that can be cold machine but obviously on that side of it is it is better with a hot machine putting in place hot always cleans better than cold and obviously you will be able to get that car done quicker, ready to be put foam onto it in the next uh, next area. So once we've once we've washed it all off and it's nice and clean, what we're then doing is shamming it, wash mitting it, and obviously at that stage you've also put foam on beforehand. Now, so you've got the foam on the on the car itself. That is another machine to apply the foam. Sometimes you can use two machines, but like I say, now the foam needs to be thought out as well. You've got different three different ways of putting applying foam you've got a foaming bottle you'd be filling up regular to put foam on via the car you can then also do a system where what simply happen is you'd have a foaming head at the lance and what you'd have there is you take chemical through the pump itself now foam obviously on that side is only a chemical it doesn't want to be aggressive it wants to be something that's very nice and neutral so when you put it on it doesn't damage anything so you can put it on via through the pump itself set a pump up that's doing snow foam and obviously a foaming head at the end of the land so that does it that way the other way is to put a, an item which is an injector after the pump and same again have a foaming head on the lance and what simply happens is even though you might think it's going on at low pressure foamers are actually hitting a pad at high pressure and it then appears to be low pressure so same again you'd be putting an injector in place depending how far you're traveling that is the most important part because at the end of the day you want good quality foam you want it so it's sticking on that car and it's not running off last thing you want is to see it running down what you're going to have to do is then apply more chemical all the time to keep it foamed up when you're when you're setting this sort of system up itself what happens is on the on the foam itself you'd then have once you've applied the foam you'll be wash mitting it a chamois in it you'd be putting a wax a wax kills kills off foam it helps to neutralize it so if you've got a good foam in there and then you put your wax on to put the finishing product give, give the finish on the car what's happening is it's neutralizing the foam so it's just getting rid of a few of the suds on the side there so as you're shamming it all the way around the car get it nice and clean you're then moving into the next area which is rinsing that car off fresh water now if you can imagine fairy washing up liquid and you simply use cold water with washing up liquid or use hot when you use hot you've got lots more f suds and and, and and it's more foamy what you don't want to do is you want to get rid of that soap off that car so really on that side you want to be using cold water cold water will get rid of the soap off the car quicker than it will on hot it is nice in the winter months to have nice warm hands while you're using a machine but like I say, the quickest way is just simply to use cold water to rinse that car off. That is the the part that takes the longest of everything. So like I say, what you're looking for there is a pressure washer that is applying large volumes of water. It doesn't matter so much about as much as pressure, it's volume that you're wanting. So at that stage, you're better off with something that's doing 20 litres if you've got 4 15 volts at low pressure, lowest pressure, than something that's doing high pressure at low volume. So like I say, that's your machines really on that side that you're using, putting in place if you're running a hand car wash. So what we have covered there is a lot of different areas, things to think about. Obviously, 
the most important one is water supply only as good as your, your water supply coming into the building we've then got the electric supply 415 or 240 volt you've then got obviously the machines are you going to have fixed machines you're going to have mobile machines that you pull out drag in drag out every day and the hoses as well most important part is what area you've got to work in so like i say on that side is area that you've got to operate within and the next one is chemical and how you're going to apply that chemical and use that chemical also in to take into account there is also the drainage area obviously like i say you don't want to be shut down before you've even got working and started the business because the council have seen water running out onto the road frosty weather it becomes it becomes ice before you know it they've closed you down that cannot happen make sure you get things in place correctly first of all so you can run smoothly last thing you want is a breakdown while you're working obviously if you're not working you're not getting any income so like i say it's all things to think about before even making a telephone call to try and help you on that side but like i say these are all pointers i hope all the information i've just given you helps uh, and like i say hope to hear from you thank you very much q services q washers ebay and youtube